Got another exam question here on the acids, bases and pH topic. So this one's number four. Going to warn you now that this is awful. So if you get anywhere with this question, you're doing really, really well. You obviously know your stuff. So as with all of these, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So just click on that, have a go at the questions and then play on when you're ready for the answers. And good luck. Okay, so make a start. So I've um, partially written up the equation, just including all this information here. So we know we've got to react calcium carbonate with this mixture here to form this weak acid. So it's a bit of an educated guess. This is not an equation that's on any specification. So we've got to try and think on our feet here. So that two there means there's two S's. So the obvious thing to do is put a two here. My next kind of um, educated guess, if you like, is, you know, this is effectively uh, like an acid. I think acid rain is a mixture of sulfur dioxide and sort of rainwater. Um, carbon dioxide is going to be formed from a carbonate. So let's put carbon dioxide in as a product. And lo and behold, that actually balances. So we don't need anything else in there. That must be the answer. First part of B, what is meant by a weak acid? So a weak acid is a proton donor, that's the acid bit, which partially dissociates or partially ionizes. So we're told that when this stuff dissolves in water, it forms these, um, a, a solution with these two ions in. The solution is weakly acidic. So where's the proton donor out of those two? It's this HSO3 minus ion. So to show that this is a weak acid, we write reversible arrows for the dissociation, remember, because it's partial, and we just need to donate the H+, plus, so a separate H plus ion, and that leaves us with an SO3 2 minus ion. Now you notice I've named that ion as sulfate 4, it's not the usual SO4 2 minus, that's the sulfate 6 ion, it's the sulfate 4 ion. You're not being tested on naming that ion, but I'm going to be using it in my explanation for the next part, that's why I've mentioned it now. Okay, so I've started off the equation and then I'm going to talk through each product as I go and hopefully it'll make sense. So magnesium needs to be oxidised. So we're going to form a salt because effectively the magnesium's reacting with this acidic part of this calcium hydrogen sulfate 4. So the reason I named this earlier is because the salt I'm going to make is magnesium sulfate 4. See, I've put the oxidation states in there just to show that that's a, an oxidation process. Gone up from zero to plus two, the oxidation number has anyway. Right, we're also told that hydrogen gas is formed. So if we put that in now, H2 gas, oxidation number wise, it's plus one for each of those hydrogens in the um, calcium hydrogen sulfate four, zero there. So there's your reduction process. So all we need to do now is deal with this calcium. So we've got an oxidation process, we've got a reduction process. So to keep this equation right, what I'm going to do is make another salt, but it's going to be calcium sulfate 4. So that is actually the answer. Now, if you got that right, you've done really, really well, because I think that's blooming awful. So if that wasn't enough, we've got to come up with the iron equation now. So what I've written up here is this, but basically showing all the ions. So obviously if it's solid, liquid or gas, we don't touch it. So magnesium solid stays as it is. So the ions present in this are a calcium two plus ion, two H plus ions, and two um, of those sulfate four ions. So then in terms of products, we've got magnesium two plus aqueous, in this salt we've got a sulfate 4 ion there it is there hydrogen and obviously the two ions present in this salt here all separated out so we can cancel down now the calcium ions are going to go the two sulfate 4 ions going to go one there one there so anything that can't cancel is the ion equation effectively so there is the ion equation there so again, well done if you got that right. And the last part, we've got to explain why this HSO3 minus ion can either act as a bronsted Lowry acid or base. So I've got the definitions in first of all. Bronsted Lowry acid is an H plus donor or a proton donor. 
Bronsted Lowry base is an H plus or proton acceptor. So in terms of equations now, to show the Bronsted Lowry acid nature of this acid, so we're shown that this is donating a proton to the hydroxide ion, because we've got to talk about the reactions with hydroxide ions and H plus ions. So we'll donate an H plus ion to the hydroxide ion, that'll form a water molecule, and you're left with this sulfate 4 ion. And the easiest way to explain it being a Bronsted Lowry base, we're just going to react the HSO3 minus ion with an H plus ion to form H2SO3. So moving on to part C, you can see I've got one of my uh, classic terrible diagrams on the screen already. I do like to sort of draw these things to help visualise what's going on. So they've taken that many grams of this HA. It's a monobasic, a weak monobasic acid. Um, we're told it's got a carboxylic acid group as well. Uh, well. That'll kick in later on. But anyway, this has been dissolved and then made up to a decimeter cubed in whatever container, so I've just gone for a volumetric flask. We're told the pH of this um, solution is 3.52. We've also got the Ka value for the acid. And I've not, if you notice, I've written up in there what's going to be going on in that flask. The weak acid is going to be partially dissociating into its ions, so H plus and A minus. So from all of that, we've got to come up with the MR and a possible structure or formula for HA. So effectively, we need to calculate how many moles of HA are in there, which will be the moles of HA that were in there, which are the moles of HA that are in that mass, and then we can calculate the MR from that. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm working out the H plus concentration um, from the pH. So H plus concentration is 10 to the minus pH, so that's 10 to the minus 3.52 which comes out at that moles per decimeter cubed. Important thing to mention now is if this had been a strong acid, we could have just gone from straight from the H plus concentration to the concentration of the acid because of the full dissociation. This is a weak acid, and so therefore the H plus concentration is not the HA concentration. So we're going to bring the Ka information into play now. So Ka for this acid would be the concentration of the H plus ion multiplied by the A minus ion concentration all over the HA concentration. Because it's monobasic, we can simplify it to this H plus concentration squared, because these are the same. So now I can rearrange this and find the HA concentration. So it rearranges to that. So when you put the numbers in, you get an HA concentration of that there. So we now know, going back to my diagram, we now know that there are 6.04 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HA in there, because it's a decimeter cubed, so the moles will be the same as the concentration. So therefore, there must have been that many moles in here, therefore, there's that many moles in that mass. So MR is mass over moles, which gives a molar mass for HA of 122. So if remember, we were told at the start of the question, we've got one carboxylic acid group in the acid. So that's got an MR of 45. If you take that away from the 1, 2, 2, the rest of the molecule, the rest of the acid, must have an MR of 77. So a little bit of trial and error now. So if you think about sort of carbons and hydrogens to get to 77, let's suppose you had um, five carbons. So that would be an MR of 60, wouldn't it? So that means you'd need H17. Well, that's absolute nonsense, that, so it can't be that. So if you take it up to C6, that's going to give you 72, 6 times 12, which leaves 5 for your hydrogens. C6H5, ah, that's, it's a benzene ring with uh, one hydrogen missing. So the formula for HA is going to be that, C6H5COOH. In other words, it's benzoic acid. The very last part of the question, so we've got to explain whether the student is correct in rejecting the titration method. So there's just a reminder of the dissociation equation for HA. So as the titration's occurring, it's reacting with the H plus ions. So the student's kind of thinking this isn't right because it's only a weak acid, you're only going to have a small amount of these. However, if you think about Le Chatelier's principle, as the OH minus ions are, are removing these, the HA will just continue to dissociate. So this equation, or this equilibrium, sorry, will just keep shifting over to the right and produce all the H plus ions eventually. 
So I'm just saying the student's incorrect because as the OH minus ions react with the H plus ions, the HA, the weak acid, will just continue to dissociate.